this is Travis Wayne Goodsell, and it's uh, another video day. <clears throat> the Mormons notice that uh, conference, that the presentation that the church leaders take uh, often involves them talking about the ideal perfect Mormon. And they talk about it as if you're doing it already. It's, I found that very curious. Because I know they're wrong. You guys aren't doing what they're suggesting that you are doing. It's a, uh, a manipulation tactic. Sort of like a reverse, psycholo rever uh, reverse psychology. In which... Uh, uh, they are telling you what they want you to be and what they want you to do and uh, you of course you guys love it you know that's it makes you feel good oh yeah the church is true <clears throat> and so uh, when guys like me come around and say hey no uh, this that they're doing that that they're doing uh, this cover-up, that cover-up, this corruption, this lie, this deception. Uh, air went out. Uh, and you guys, uh, and you guys get upset with me. And when I call you guys bullies, call you for what you are, uh, that's exactly how you respond. See, when the prophets tell you how they want you to be, you think that you already are, and so you don't even bother to become what they want you to do and be. But when I come around and tell you guys who you are, you guys then demonstrate that you really are who I say you are. And you bully me. You try to silence me. And... Uh, yeah, so that's a very interesting phenomenon. And there are people who try to say, hey, you need to be more like this in order to get more people to watch. Really? I have to be somebody else who I'm not? I have to deceive and lie to you? I have to flatter, pacify, deceive, etc. to, to uh, get more people to watch me? You guys think that that's a good thing? No. I'm not going to be somebody else. I'm not going to change. And then people say, oh, well, you're just full of pride then. <laughs> See, you guys are bullying and attacking and abusing me. When you tell someone that, you know, they're full of pride, that's exactly what you're doing. You're bullying them. And you think, oh, well, yeah, but I'm right. <laughs> uh, yesterday, uh, all I have on my, I did a video that's now on my cover, cover page, I guess. It's the introduction to those who are new and those who are previous subscribers. I mentioned in there about uh, aesthetics and how uh, it's understood in aesthetics that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Any form of art is uh, subject, subjective. You know, it, it can be interpreted any way we want. If we like it, we like it. If we don't like it, we don't like it. And it's all based on opinion. You know, our own personal preferences. All aesthetics. That includes not just uh, movies, music, uh, but all art forms. You know, we either like it or we don't like it, or we just have no care. <clears throat> uh, and if you want to, there is really no scientific standard for identifying a good versus bad work of art. Uh, you know, you can say that a, a child 
uh, when he draws a little crayon drawing, that that's a bad work of art. But you don't tell a child that, do you? <laughs> that would be abuse. Because obviously the child has not developed yet. They're still learning how to uh, recreate the life that they are experiencing. And so uh, for a child, uh, such a drawing it can be good. You know, of course, mothers, they all say that it, it's the greatest thing that they've ever seen and they post it on their refrigerator. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, for people to come on to my video channel, because uh, I'm not a professional, obviously, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to fully utilize the, uh, the Movie Maker program that I have. And uh, there are some things that I wish I could do, you know, like have little captions here that pop up on my video screen. And then I can refer to them as I'm talking. I don't know how to do that, if I can do that. I don't know if my movie maker has that option in it or not. I can't figure it out yet. I'm technologically uh, weak in that area. Uh, so that's something I would like to be able to do. Uh, but uh, I know it can be done because I see others doing it. But uh, YouTube was intended for a social media. It is not meant to be a professional channel where um, businesses and professional companies uh, post their videos for us to watch. <laughs> that wasn't the intention. It was supposed to be like Facebook, where... Uh, you know, I get on and I have my page and I, I do my videos and I post my things and, and uh, my family and friends watch what I post. And they then say, oh, that's great. You're a superstar. <laughs> and then I feel special and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's what YouTube was intended to be. But then it got invaded by business. And professionals and uh, you know that's good too um, but as a result it's caused a lot of people to abuse those of us who are just using YouTube to try to socialize you know a social media who are uh, trying to inform who are trying to share our lives you know I come from a unique perspective uh, that is beneficial to those who are interested. And uh, unfortunately, uh, nobody was interested in the beginning. I was trying to do uh, videos about uh, my Paleo Hebrew and Egyptian discoveries, and, along with some other things, and uh, trying to get that figured out. And, then I got married and stopped <laughs> doing videos for a while, uh, but uh, now that's over with, so I'm back to doing videos again, and uh, uh, yeah, as I do videos again, uh, I have a Mormon bishop who says, I don't like what you're doing, I want you to stop or you don't bother coming to church. I'm like, what? But the Book of Mormon is the official doctrine of the Mormon church. Why should I stop? <laughs> and so with that, that was the final straw. So as a result, all my decades of experience in the church are now making sense as I now go and do research on church history. And the church doesn't want you to do research on church history, do they? They want you to just accept whatever they tell you, and you go on with your life. And anybody who says that the church is wrong, you come out and say, No, we're bullying you to be silent. We don't like you. You're oppressing us. 
You're taking away our rights as a religion. Sorry, but religions do not have the right to be abusive, to take away the rights of others. And that's the one thing that is supposed to be silenced, is abuse, corruption, and uh, crime. That's the only thing that is to be silenced. And so it's interesting that those who are violators, who need to be silenced, are the ones that are the most vocal in trying to silence those of us who are exposing it. <clears throat> and so, why then is the church changing? You know, it's a traditional church, you know, a church that grandparents feel safe and comfortable with because it's not changing, it's the same. And uh, <laughs> old folks don't like change. So why then is the church led by old people changing? You know, all these different changes since April last year. You know, this is drastic. This is intense. You know, people aren't able to keep up. I mean, my ward here, uh, they can't figure out the new ministry program. Uh, they're just treating it like home teaching, except that they don't report it anymore. <laughs> and so, uh, but as a result, that confusion uh, is uh, causing less ministering as well. So, yeah, it's just, it's a failed prod program, and uh, by their fruits, you shall know it. Not just people, not just prophets, as the Jesus story is illustrating, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, then the church, of course, they always say, well, it's because the members didn't implement it properly. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to see if it was good. <laughs> That's the one thing I learned when I was redesigning the warehouse in Beehive. You have to have the human understanding factored into your equation. You can come up with the greatest idea in the world, but if you do not include the human factor, it, it's not going to work. You're never going to know. And that's what's frustrating, uh, trying to uh, lead or, or uh, help uh, other people in society, is that uh, if you can't figure out how to motivate them uh, to uh, go along with what you come up with, what you come up with just isn't going to work, <laughs> no matter how great an idea you think it is. And so uh, the, uh, the human factor needs to be factored into all of this. And uh, yeah, the church is not catching on to the human factor, obviously. <coughs> because uh, the stats of the church, if you remember last April, they said they're not telling you the stats anymore. You have to go look it up yourself. And uh, how many of you actually looked it up and did the math to figure out uh, the increase? Because 16 million? Oh, it's going to always be increasing because you get more and more children born every year with an increase in membership, right? And thus an increase of the number of eight-year-olds that are ready for baptism. You know, once you got a, a certain level, you have a percentage increase automatically, <clears throat> right? And that's only if we're really at 16 million. But then there was that scandal that happened way back when, 2014, I think, maybe 2015, but uh, the news was reporting that the church is lying about their statistics, their membership stats. <laughs> and, and of course, Mormons, they take the tactic of, oh, you can't criticize the church. Church is true. We're filling the world with new people. You know, if you're not going to bother 
to check the stats yourself. Uh, why do you even bother to defend something, defend the church blindly? Because that's what it is. You're blind, yelling at other people to back off and leave you alone. If the church is losing members, the leaders of the church need to change. They've got to figure out something wrong, recognize what they're doing that's wrong. Because it's not just the members, you can't blame them. You don't even know why they left. And so that's just abuse for you to claim that the, the members who leave the church are the ones at fault. You don't even know why. But that's what you guys have been conditioned to think. That it must be something the members did that they left for. They weren't studying their scriptures. They were committing fornication. They were drinking, violating the word of wisdom. You know, you all come up with all sorts of accusations. And none of that is true. People are finding out as they interview uh, former Mormon after ex-Mormon after former Mormon that, no, that's not the reason why they left. It is a result of finding out from the church, from their gospel topic essays, and the information that the church claims that they've been covering up church history. And the thing is, is that what the church is presenting in the gospel topic essays are lies. There's they're lying about lying about a lie. <laughs> it's just, it's mind boggling. But yeah, you have uh, other uh, former Mormons who are coming out and saying the church ain't true because the church says so in the gospel topic essays. You know, and they believe the church when the church comes out and says, we've been lying to you. Oh, okay, we believe you now then. <laughs> it's just hilarious and sad because uh, people don't actually do research to find the truth to say okay wait a minute church is saying that they're lying and then now everybody else is saying okay the church has been lying and therefore we're out but what's the truth <laughs> you know if if the first vision was a fraud well, what had really happened? Why did they make a church? You know, the Joseph Smith family were never uh, interested in, in a church. And Joseph Smith got kicked out of the Methodist church after he was supposedly had this first vision. And so religion wasn't really a, a thing for them. Why did they form a religion? Why make a book called the Book of Mormon? You know, and the Book of Mormon obviously isn't true. Yes, Mormons, it's not true. Have you even bothered to do a linguistic analysis? Uh, what? <laughs> exactly. When people who have actually done a linguistic analysis and say, hey, it's plagiarism. Do you understand what plagiarism is? You're taught in school. Don't copy other people's work. That's plagiarism. And yet, you don't bother to research the Book of Mormon. And instead, we now have these young kids who are more technologically advanced than I am and able to present a better presentation than I am. <laughs> but uh, they're saying that, hey, the book is plagiarized, but that confirms that it's true. <laughs> And so, not too many of you watched that video. <laughs> I just, I, I saw that kid's video, and I think a lot of people have watched that video. I haven't checked, but, you know, they seem to be cool, hip Mormon dudes, Mormon kids. <sighs> but, my God, what's happened to us? That we think that it's okay to copy somebody else's work and call it our own. <laughs> oh, is it? 
because it's oh it's it's spiritual when i read it i get the feeling of the holy ghost that is true well why didn't you get it from the original books that the, the book of mormon took it from <laughs> one of those was the uh, uh, uh i can't remember the exact title but it had to do with napoleon uh, it was a school textbook back in the early 1800s and uh, <clears throat> it just blows my mind and it contains in it uh, Hebrew chiasmus writing in that Napoleon book you know that's the form and style that it has and it's plagiarized in the Book of Mormon and so yes uh, John Welsh comes out and says, Oh, the Book of Mormon is true because it has Hebrew chiasmus. Yeah! No! <laughs> no, John, you've destroyed the church. And he doesn't even realize it, you know, because the church has given him a career because of it. <laughs> and so he doesn't want to say, admit that, oh, whoops. <laughs> I've just proved the church false. <laughs> but Mormons, you can figure it out for yourself. What does the Book of Mormon say it was written in? Uh, Reformed? No. <laughs> Small plates? Pay attention, guys. This is on the test. <laughs> it was written in he Egyptian, not Hebrew. And even in, what, in the later part of the book in Mormon or is it Moroni where it says uh, we write in Egyptian but we've altered the Egyptian uh, and if we had space we would have written in Hebrew because Hebrew is perfect <laughs> but the Hebrew too we have altered <laughs> so the Book of Mormon testifies that it's an Egyptian record and so why is there Hebrew chiasmus in it? <laughs> it just blows my mind how nobody's catching on to this. And so, yeah, with the, the gospel topic essays, uh, members are saying, okay, you are now claiming the church is lying. And now you're saying that Joseph Smith actually had sex with a 14-year-old girl. No, he didn't. But still, the church is claiming it, and so then people are like, okay, I can't belong to this church. I want nothing to do with a leader who has sex with 14-year-old girls. And uh, others say, oh, okay, Brigham Young was a racist. That's true. And, uh, and so, yeah, they, okay, we want nothing to do with this church. But what do you Mormons do? When these people say, hey, we can't handle 14-year-old rapes and uh, racist prophets, uh, do you guys say, oh, you're right, I should leave too? No. Instead, you attack them uh, and you abuse them. They've done nothing wrong. Why are you attacking them? Why are you so set? On calling them the enemy of the church apostates antichrists when they themselves are saying hey this behavior of the prophets is wrong that can't be Jesus's church and they're right if Joseph Smith was raping 14 year old girls the church wouldn't be true would it and so it just blows my mind how people can justify it say well it's God's true church regardless of what is true <laughs> it's just it's mind-boggling but in my stats video uh, we're not talking about a few people who have left the church stats themselves you know there was a reason why the church is now no longer talking about the membership numbers because I went and looked they lost over 200,000 even though they're claiming 16 million members they lost over 200,000 that's a problem 
you know, any business knows that if you're losing 200,000 customers, that the number that you're increasing and the number who are leaving no longer being customers is makes it so that you're actually losing overall. That's a red flag, warning signs, buzzers going off, alarm bells, you know, you know immediately that you are in a crisis mode because as a business, you need to make money. And if you're not making money, you're about to go out of business. And if you go out of business, how are you going to live for the rest of your life? <laughs> so, uh, you know, you don't have job security anymore. You're sort of, you're sort of relying on customers to keep you in your lifestyle that you're used to. And so, uh, 200,000 on the records for 2017. We have to wait until April conference, and when they finally reveal the, uh, the real statistics for 2018, to see. <clears throat> because despite the loss of 200,000, they had seven new temples announced in April, and then in October, 12 more temples. Wait a minute. <laughs> Aren't temples supposed to be based upon the number of members that reach a certain level because the, they're paying tithing, those members? Because that's how the church does it. You have to have a certain number of membership who are, are paying tithing that are preparing or are ready to go through the temple. And uh, it's based on tithing, which means it's based on the number of membership. And because uh, when you go through your uh, bit, um, tithing settlement at the end of the year, the bishop is required to tell you how the church spends tithing. And that's what they tell you. Temples, buildings, Book of Mormons doesn't go for the poor, as it's supposed to, according to the Bible. Uh, no, it goes for temples, buildings, and Book of Mormons. And that's what they have it set up as. You, know, you get a certain number of membership, they're paying a full tithe in order to qualify to go through the temple. Therefore, the church says, hey, okay, we can build a temple there. But they're losing members. And it's not that... You know, Russia all of a sudden had a surge of new members because when you check the stats, no, they didn't. They, they're not even near the level. They're like at least 10,000 off. And, and that's if you include all of Russia. It, you know, if they're going to put it in just one city, okay, but shouldn't the whole of Russia be paying enough tithing? because they have enough members to justify it? Where is the, it's just mind boggling. The stats don't show the need for a temple yet in Russia and in other places as well. All these other places are not demonstrating the need for a temple. Uh, the ones in Utah, yeah, <laughs> but not elsewhere in the world. And uh, you know, I don't, Maybe they have a lesser standard that they're having to do in order to make a temple out there. But uh, it's a losing money situation. If you're not generating the money to pay for the temple, how then are you paying for the temple? You have to take a loss. And in a business setting, you can only take so much loss <laughs> before your business collapses. It, so it's a, a poor business strategy. But uh, in October conference, did you catch? They're not going to be building new churches, new ward houses, new stake centers. And they have no idea when they're going to be starting it up again. Why? It's because the church is losing membership. And so as a result, what they have is less populated. 
and so they have to bring in now I, I heard one person say that in one particular uh, foreign ward uh, they lost so many members that they had to recruit outside Mormons to go to that church <laughs> to keep it functioning you know it's not just a situation where you send in missionaries to do all the the callings in the church but uh, this was actual members that had to be called in to attend that church instead of their own so yeah the church is hurting in numbers and from my estimate it's three million is all they have left around three million we don't know for sure because the church will not reveal the exact uh, attendance numbers in sacrament the actual active membership numbers uh, I had seen people uh, posting uh, what they were claiming was the the church membership active stats the only problem was it's a computer voice I need confirmation you know if a computer voice can be confirmed by a regular source that's trusted then okay fine I'll listen to the computer voice then but if I confirm it why am I listening to the computer voice <laughs> just go to the source that I trust but uh, uh, yeah and then you have them claiming that they're showing you the actual stats but it's in a format that's like what no that's not the format they use <laughs> so this somebody created this so yeah but going with the church's stats I've been able to estimate that the church only has three million active membership which means an exodus of 13 million 13 million have said enough I want out of this church I'm not gonna participate anymore 13 million Mormons and you remaining 3 million think that being abusive to the 13 million is the right thing to do that the church is worth defending and protecting for that and then you have this this bishop who's a sex trafficker a bishop sex trafficker and this just ain't a random thing oh whoops you know no this is a common thing that's going on in Utah Mormons are repressed sexually and as a result they're committing all sorts of horrible human rights violations and sexual abuses that's because of the repression you can't deny people uh, a basic need and tell them you can't do it that causes internal anger issues and of course part of that we're realizing may be the lead poisoning that Utahns are getting Sandy just recently got exposed to lead poisoning their bodies are now ruined for life I don't understand why Sandy didn't riot they've been poisoned and lead poisoning causes damage you know you become stupid literally you become stupid it destroys your brain and then you get anger issues it causes emotional disturbances in the brain causing a person to get angry and that is the only excuse to justify why Mormons are less intelligent and angry you know I see it they won't research they don't know how to research they can't put two and two together with the scriptures when you read a scripture they don't know how to liken it unto themselves there's an an educational problem and uh, and I see it with those who are are arrested in Utah they don't have enough blacks in Utah to fill up the jails with blacks only 
And so Utah has to figure out some other way to meet their quota. And so they go after the poor. And the poor are uneducated. That's why they're poor. Uh, for the most part. Uh, I, I haven't really seen too many that have a, a breakthrough idea that they just can't get around to making and thus they're stuck in their poverty here in Utah but uh, uh, yeah it, it's sad people need help they need assistance and Utah refuses to give it to them uh, they'd rather use them as fodder for the jails and so the poor are neglected here in Utah but with the loss of membership of 13 million, <coughs> uh, that's a loss of revenue, isn't it? They're not paying tithing. And it's not just the 200,000 that doesn't justify temples, yet we're building temples at a record pace now? Because hmm. uh, when Monson took over, he slowed down the temple production. But he said, we build temples, which is proof that the church is growing. Oops. Ooh, now the church has to keep showing that they're building new temples in order to show that the church is still growing. Oh, Monson, naughty, naughty boy. So uh, that hurt the church when he said that. Uh, because, yes, that's how it was, is that, oh, the church is growing, we're getting tithing, we can build a church, a temple. And then uh, Hinckley's system of smaller temples was the manner in which that made it possible. You don't have to have as much money uh, to justify a temple building. And uh, then Monson comes along and says, uh, you know, we're going to slow down the temples now, but it's a testament that the church is growing and we'll build them as as necessary <laughs> and now we don't have a just cause to build a temple and they're still cranking out the temples you know the one in india also no not enough members to justify it and so this is dangerous Mormons because if you don't have enough people going to the temple once it's built what's the purpose in having it oh we're building it for this one person <laughs> we're spending 40 million on a temple that only one person will go to we're not sure how to staff it yet probably have to do it with missionaries <laughs> just a very poor business strategy you know and you say well it's because they need to be saved it's in a material wealth that's unimportant uh, then why are we spending 40 million on a temple when we can do it for uh, you know a house out in the, a new subdivision house I can't daybreak you know those were running five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in their beginning days you know, that's a lot less. Why can't a temple just be that much? If you guys, you know, so yes, temples are lavish. And there isn't a need for lavish temples because there's not enough revenue to compensate for it. So, you know, the Kirtland Temple, that was built you know, like a regular building. You know, it's when Brigham Young came to Utah. He wanted to make him more lavish. And so, when you have a loss of members, that causes a money crisis. And if you're needing money to keep your operation running, uh, you have to generate more money, don't you? So how do you do it? You have to make changes trying to get people to come back to get new people and uh, that's why the church is changing 
is because they're collapsing. Because if it's not broke, you don't fix it. There's no need. If the church was growing and growing and growing, there'd be no need for change. Why? Why are you not having the teachings of President Monson for 2018? Why did you just up and stop them? And uh, why not just finish them off? You know, why change when there is no need to change? When everything is working great? You know, if you've got something that works, why are you wanting to change all that? <laughs> to gamble that it's going to work and pay off more? To get more people in? <laughs> that would be dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> South Park. About the Mormons. And so, yeah, the only reason why you need to change something is when it, the system ain't working. And so, you know, the leaders are now saying, oh, these are inspired changes. This is revelation. Well, what about what happened before? Wasn't that revelation? But that didn't work anymore, did it? Gospel topic essays? Weren't they revelation? They caused an exodus of 13 million. That doesn't seem like revelation to me. So, yeah, I, I saw one person's comment on another guy's video uh, about the changes, and he says uh, the church's loss in membership numbers means time for a revelation. <laughs> He's right. That's what the church is doing. They're pulling a rabbit out of their hat. It's a con job. They're making it seem like everything is fine. No, these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> and they they just, it's just sad. It really is sad. And, uh, ah, man. And so then they bring in uh, the Brazilian apostle. And uh, if you checked his stats which I'm sure all of you have done and oh I've got this rookie card of the Apostle rookie card <laughs> he this is these are his stats he used to be a an, an investment capitalist hmm investment uh, yeah that's what he was in Brazil he was involved in investing so what then happens with the church after they put him in as an apostle well in May after the church announced in April that hey we're building a temple in Russia even though there's not enough members to justify it see what they're doing now Fox 13 News and the Salt Lake Tribune both covered the story that the church is now using LLC companies because Trump said LLC companies no longer need to report where they're getting their money from. Hmm. The church was exposed as obtaining, in May of last year, $32 billion through these LLC companies. And the church was funneling them through the stock market. Investing. Huh. Just like the apostle did with his job before he became an apostle. Huh. See in the connection here? They put him in the apostleship so that they can learn to do what he was doing with his job. And that's what they did. They're generating revenue. Now on the surface, well, nothing wrong with it. Unless you're getting dirty money invested through these LLC companies. That's called money laundering. And that's why uh, Trump said, hey, no longer do we need to report our LLC money to the IRS. We don't need to tell them where we're getting that from. <laughs> why? Because Trump doesn't want to know that want the IRS to know that he's funneling money 
for laundered Russian money from the oligarchs. And so church comes out, says, we're dealing with Russia to get a temple, and now they're getting $32 billion through LLCs? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's going on in the church. The church is compromised. They were hurting in membership and thus hurting in money. They were closing down in 2017. They were closing down visitor centers throughout the world. They couldn't afford to keep them running. So they were cutting off non-essential centers throughout the world trying to save money. And then they bring on a guy who knows how to invest. And then they announce a temple in Russia. And then they get caught for obtaining 32 billion. Yeah. Church is committing money laundering fraud financial fraud. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. And so what are you going to do, Mormons? You're going to say, oh, it, it's necessary for the work of the Lord to go forth. Uh, uh, wickedness never was happiness. You recognize that, Mormons? That's from the Book of Mormon. You can't do the right by doing the wrong. Just because they're prophets does not that make them above the law of the Book of Mormon. If you have to follow it, they have to follow it. But did you notice the statement from the church in regards to the sex predator bishop? It is unacceptable for members and local leaders. They left somebody out. They left the prophets out. This was a no-brainer situation in public relations. Anybody committing sex trafficking, it's wrong. That's all the church had to do. It's come out and denounce it altogether. And instead, they left out the prophets from this. That concerns me. Is the prophets involved in sex trafficking around the world? You know, when you purposely leave that out, that makes me wonder, why did you leave it out? Are you involved in it? Are you trying to manage women around the world? You know, Nigeria, they're going through a civil war. Yet we added another temple there, if you didn't pay attention. The first temple was already struggling as it was. People there didn't like the temple, and they would, had to have guards posted to protect it. But now we're building another one? Are you sure? <clears throat> so, something's not right in the state of Denmark. And, uh, and it's sad if the three million of you who are left are refusing to acknowledge what's going on. If the remaining three million of you would rather attack guys like me than actually stop look and and identify what's wrong so you know i don't hate mormons you know it's, i'm not a hater this isn't a hate channel i'm trying to help mormons get out of mormonism because I was born and raised in the church. I knew of the truth, 
but I thought it was at the local level. I thought the confusion and the, the errors were at a local level. <coughs> you know, I recognize prophets when they get up and speak, uh, saying something contradictory to another prophet, and I just went, ah, okay. And, and I just said, okay, well, they're, they're not the president of the church yet. <laughs> because Joseph Fielding Smith Jr., uh, interestingly, would write his books as an apostle and talk about the fall of Adam as the fall of Eve. But when he became a president, he then started talking about the Book of Mormon's position about the fall of Adam. I went, well, that's interesting. As a president of the church, he no longer talked about the fall of Eve. He was now talking about the fall of Adam. Hmm, okay. And so I thought, oh, that's just because he's now got the mantle of the president of the church. Turns out, no. <laughs> that's not the reason. But I was fooled. And it wasn't until I finally had the last straw with Bishop Reed Hammond here in West Valley that uh, I said, all right, well, if I'm not allowed to go to church anymore because I'm not going to deny that the Book of Mormon is the official doctrine of the church, then I'm going to do church history research. I'm going to figure this out once and for all. Try to understand why is it that there are so many different doctrines within the church itself, just like the first vision account of Joseph Smith. <laughs> but instead of multiple churches, it's multiple members with differing ideas. And, uh, yeah, that's why I'm doing these videos, Mormons. That's why I have the shocking titles. I can't get your attention because YouTube is shadow banning me. And the only way to get your attention is to do a shocking video with what you naturally type in the computer. And so if this video does well, it's because I figured out your interest and YouTube is recommending my video for you and you saw it and you thought oh it's recommended to me I find this very curious I want to know more and so it's not a trap but that's what you're gonna perceive it as and by 52 minutes now you're probably not listening my faithful they're listening uh, but, uh, uh, you know, you guys aren't listening because you re are in denial. You refuse to accept that the church has fallen, that it's collapsing. Because it happens internally. When it's collapsing, the church isn't going to be honest with you. They're covering it up. And so when the actual collapse occurs, you're going to be shocked. And now the church is committing crimes in order to save the image of the church. And it, it's just not going to hold for long. So, alrighty, we're getting nearer to an hour. And so it's going to take some time now to upload. Uh, I've got to go running in an hour, assuming it hasn't snowed. And I'm pretty sure it hasn't because we were warming up now for spring we may have a, a little snow but i'm not anticipating more but you have to wait until memorial day that's the time when okay now we can plant <laughs> so you know i don't hate you mormons understand that if there's any of you still listening I don't hate you. I am not your threat. It is the leaders of the church who are the threat to you. And, and all the evidence, all the facts, for some reason is not getting through to you. You're already putting your thumbs down on my video. You're already commenting your hatred, your bullying, your attempts to silence me. You don't like my presentation, uh, and so you use that instead of coming out and saying, You're wrong, Travis! <laughs> so, hmm. 
noises outside. We have the main road outside, but sometimes people like to dump their trash in our bin. But, uh, all right, well, it's another day. Uh, I, I still need to do part two of the polygamy. I still need to get the the new translation of the Bible done <laughs> from the original Egyptian records. And yeah, I'm I'm sure that those of you who did watch my video about my dreams are in shock. You don't know what to say. Uh, I'm kind of worried because I haven't heard from MD lately. I was hoping that she would have heard and it would have made the attempt to communicate. Um, so I hope she's there today. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I love hearing from you guys. You know, those of you who are nice, <laughs> who uh, have recognized for yourself that the church is wrong. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's not easy being green. Time to get going, I guess.